Let's say we've had a Today we look at Hardy Weinberg, specifically the equilibrium equation. You're going to use this equation when you're not given the number of each genotype. So here's the equation. This is based on a population being in equilibrium. We have P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1, and then P plus Q equals 1. Um, Ms. Jones, I don't know what those mean. That's okay. So traditionally, we think of P being our dominant allele, so the frequency of that dominant allele. The actual formula sheet says frequency of allele 1, um, but traditionally when you look at it with your classroom, you probably see it as the dominant allele. And then Q is going to be the frequency of my second allele or my uh, frequency of my recessive allele. Okay, now again, notice that the P is a single, it's just one P, and it's just one Q. So that's just meaning that we have a single allele. So if we ask you the frequency of this certain allele, then that's where you're going to be using your P or your Q. But when we're talking about individuals and we're talking about different um, phenotypes they might have, or if we talk about their genotype, we're looking at not just one, but two different alleles. So we're going to use the second equation where we have that P squared, the 2PQ, and the Q squared, because each of those are going to denote something that is diploid, something that has two alleles. So P squared is my frequency of homozygous for allele one, or I always say frequency of the homozygous dominant. Q squared is the frequency of the homozygous allele 2 or a homozygous recessive. And then 2PQ is the frequency of the allele 1 and the um, allele 2 when they're heterozygous. Um, and so kind of think about it that P is our dominant allele. And so if I have two P's, that's P squared. So P times P is P squared. And then same thing is if I had two of these recessive alleles, so Q times Q gives me Q squared. That might be a way to kind of help you remember these different equations. So in a population of penguins, the fluffy feathers, capital P, is dominant to smooth feathers, lowercase p. If 15% of the population shows smooth feathers, what percentage of the population to the nearest tenth is heterozygous of uh, four fluffy feathers? So I always use this little chart to help my students out. And so what have I been given? I've been given that 15% are gonna show smooth feathers. And whenever you're solving these problems, you always start your Q squared, okay? Which thankfully, the question gives that to me. So 15% are gonna be Q squared. So if I make that a decimal, that's gonna be 0.15. Well, if I know Q squared, I can solve for the Q. The way to get Q, I take the square root of Q squared. So the square root of 0.15 will give me 0.387. Well, based on my formula, I know that P plus Q equals one. So if I know Q, I say 1 minus my Q will give me my P, so my P is going to be 0.613. If I know P, now I can solve for P squared. I'll just square the value that I got for P. So 0.613 squared is going to give me 0.376. And then in order to find 2 times P times Q, I say 2 times my P, which is 0.613, times my Q, which is 3.87, and that gives me 0.4. 474. Now it tells me to give this in my percentage, so that would be 47.4%. So if you can pause the video, you could try this yourself. In a population of trogons, a type of bird, tail banding, capital B, is dominant to no tail banding, lowercase b. If 68% of the population shows tail banding, what is the percentage to the nearest tenth is heterozygous for tail banding? So again, we're going to use our chart, and we always want to start with Q squared. So the question tells me that 68% show tail banding, but tail banding is a dominant trait. So before I can get started, I actually have to go and say, well, 1 minus 0.68, because I need to figure out what is Q squared. The reason I have to start out this way is because if I'm given the dominant trait, that dominant trait can either be homozygous dominant or it can be heterozygous. So in order for me to do this calculation, I have to actually start with that Q squared. So my Q squared is 0.32. Once I know my Q squared, I can find my Q, take the square root of 0.32, giving me 0.566. Once I know Q, I can solve for P because P plus Q equals 1. So 1 minus the 0.566 gives me my 0.434. Once I have P, I can solve for P squared. So I say 0.434 squared gives me my P squared, which is 0.188. And then to solve for 2PQ, I multiply 2 times P times Q, which is 2 times the 4.34 times the 0.566, which gives me 0.491. And then it tells me that I need to figure out what is the uh, percentage that are heterozygous. And that's going to be 49.1% because I multiplied this um, decimal times 100. Hope this was helpful. Remember, 8 bad pain was just assessed by all.